Morning, everyone. My name is Michael Jacobs. I'm the Chief of Urology here at Palm Beach Gardens Medical Center. This is Debbie Gelnett, who is the Chief of Education here at Palm Beach Gardens Medical Center. Debbie and I are putting together a video regarding urology for the nurses. Uh, we did this about 15 years ago or so, this, so this is version 2.0. The reason we're doing this is because I certainly have an understanding that the nurses, for the most part, do not get the training that they should have in nursing school. And it's not their fault. This is just the way of how things are now. And so what I'd like to do is catch up everyone on urology, particularly floor nursing urology, because we want to avoid any issues as far as catheter placements, issues that can relate to bleeding, infection, trauma, and things like that. So first I'd like to start with anatomy. Okay, so the female anatomy is pretty straightforward. The urethra is only about an inch, an inch and a half long. Pretty straight shot as far as getting catheters in. But the male anatomy is a little different, as we know. The <clears throat> male anatomy is such that this is the opening of the penis. There's a curvature here called the bulbous urethra. You pass through the sphincter here, pass through the prostate here, and then into the bladder. So you have areas of potential obstruction, potential uh, trauma that we try to avoid. So for a female, the typical catheter that we place is a, is a simple 16 French catheter. It comes in a kit. The concept of French is just simply the size. Uh, the higher the number, the wider the catheter. So such that this catheter is a 24 French. You can see the difference in caliber and this catheter on top is a 16 French. So again, the higher the number, the wider the catheter. Reasons for using wider or narrower catheters is simply the situation at hand. To help drain a bladder for someone in retention on the floor, uh, particularly a female, uh, or you want to monitor the urine output closely, a 16 regular tipped straight catheter should work just fine. However, for men, we like to use a coude catheter. Coude means elbow in French. And so the tip is curved, such like an elbow, okay? Same concept as far as French size. They go down to 8, 10 French, all the way up to 26 or so French. The concept of the coude catheter is that it makes that turn for you around the bulbous urethra here and through the prostate and into the bladder a lot easier than trying to thread this straight catheter through that area. What happens sometimes is just because of the man's prostate, as they get older, it does enlarge. Those straight catheters can get caught up right here. And trying to thread something through there can cause a lot of trauma. And sometimes I notice that some of the nurses think that they're all the way into the bladder because the catheter ends up about here and then they go, time to blow up the balloon. That's when we get into trouble. Here's the one thing you do not want to do. You do not want to blow up a balloon of the catheter until you are sure that the catheter is in the bladder. Because what happens is, this is the 10 cc typical syringes that we have in the kits. You blow up the balloon as such, okay? Usually it's about 10 cc's or so. That's the Typical coup de catheter with a 10 cc balloon. But you can see, if you blow up that balloon in that prostate, in the prostatic part of the urethra, you will cause damage. You will have significant bleeding. You will have a patient who is very unhappy, uh, probably asking for pain medication, and possibly having to go to the operating room because of a ruptured urethra. So. The one thing you want to do is before you blow up any balloon, even a female, I guess, but certainly the males, you want to be sure that you get urine out the catheters. If there's any questions, I'll show you the irrigating kits we use. You irrigate the catheter just to make sure the urine is draining. You can flush water in, flush water out. Then you know you're in the bladder. Sometimes I get a call that I push water in, but nothing comes out. 
you are not in the bladder. Until you get the return, you are not in the bladder. So never blow up the balloon on a catheter until you are certain as best can be that you have the catheter well within the bladder. So the bladder catheter would sit just like that. The balloon will sit on this side of the prostate here, not within the prostate. It'll sit on this side of the prostate within the bladder. Then you know when you're in perfect position and you blow up the balloon. Again, I stress this. I can't stress it. I can't stress this any more. You have to be sure the catheter is in position before blowing up the balloon. Okay. That's the coude catheter we typically use for males. That's the other thing I want to bring up is that I notice two things happen. Uh, unless you get an order, I understand, from the doctor to get the coude catheter for the men. Uh, Typically, the nurses reach for the regular catheter kits, okay? For a woman, it's not a problem. But I recommend for the men that you ask the doctor or your senior nurse, can I use a coude catheter? Now, coude catheters typically are not in kits. Uh, they're typically individually wrapped. So you can start with a 16 size coude catheter for the men. Um, the other thing I recommend is asking for xylocaine jelly. Typically, the xylocaine jellies come like this, as called Eurojets, okay? It's basically lidocaine jelly in a 2% concentration, okay? You pop this off, you pop this off, you pop this off, and you put the two together, okay? Sometimes, like I said, it may be helpful to have your partner help you. So certainly, the sequence of events would be like this. You get the authorization to use a coude catheter for the men. You get the authorization to use xylocaine jelly for the men and women, okay? It doesn't hurt to use that on the women as well. And then you put the two together. You can have somebody assist you. You inject the xylocaine jelly as such, okay? Okay, you can squeeze that so it doesn't leak out. You put the rest on the catheter as such. Try to avoid putting it into the hole or the eye of the catheter. Put it around there because you don't want to plug up the opening where the urine is going to come out. Insert it with the tip up, okay, like that, okay, such that, again, we're trying to make the anatomy work for us here. We go around the bulbous urethra, okay, and from there through the prostatic urethra and then into the bladder. Again, the key point is do not blow up the balloon yet. Many people are in a hurry to blow up the balloon. That is the last thing you want to do when you put a catheter in. So another catheter I do want to discuss is the CBI or continuous bladder catheter, continuous bladder irrigation catheter. The continuous bladder irrigation catheter is typically used on a patient who has had a TERP transurethral resection of the prostate. That's for gentlemen who have obstruction uh, from the prostate, they're having difficulty urinating, and so the doctor goes in there and resects, either with laser or standard electrical, we resect the obstructing tissue, and typically the patient leaves the operating room with one of these catheters. The concept here is it has an intake port of saline, again you always use saline for irrigation, intake port for the saline to go in, irrigate the catheter on a 24-hour basis, and then an outport, just like any other catheter, where the nurse would irrigate by hand. Uh, typically, I like to order a irrigation every four to six hours. Even if the catheter looks pretty clear, we know that the patient could still form some clots at the bottom of the bladder, and it's best to, I believe, irrigate by hand periodically just to make sure that there are no clots forming. The concept of the irrigating catheter is this. The irrigation goes through here, out through here. My recommendation is don't shut off the irrigation as you do a scheduled hand irrigation, okay? Just let the irrigation flow so that the bladder will be distended as you are irrigating. If you don't let the bladder distend, then what happens is when you pull back, that bladder is gonna contract 
around the catheter, and you're going to have more difficulty irrigating. If you let the irrigation flow in as you hand irrigate, then the bladder will dilate enough so that you can irrigate real easily like that, okay? So that's a CBI or continuous bladder irrigation catheter. The straight calf. The straight calf is typically used for someone who is in retention, particularly a female. Uh, this works real well uh, and perhaps needs a catheter program every six hours or so uh, to drain the bladder as opposed to having placed a catheter. By doing the in and out catheter straight calf program, we still allow the patient to try to urinate on his or her own uh, in between. So if you don't want it, or there's a reason not to, put an indwelling catheter with a balloon and the patient cannot urinate, the typical order is going to come in to straight calf the patient, uh, and you use this straight calf kit. It has everything you need. It has the catheter, which is disposable. You don't use it a second time. It has a urine specimen container to send off the urine analysis and culture if needed. It has all the betadine and cotton swabs and everything you need. That's the straight catheter kit. Again, typically for someone who can't urinate, uh, particularly for a female because it's a straight catheter, uh, this is the one you want to use. The point I want to make, though, is if you're asked to do a straight calf on a male, again, I would ask that you request the CUDE catheters for the men. Again, same thing, uh, if uh, there's an issue of passing catheters and discomfort, ask for the xylocaine jelly. It does not hurt, even for the women, okay? For the men, you will ask for a 14, because this is a 14, okay? You will ask for a 14 CUDE catheter and have that sent up. Typically, the 14 CUDE catheters do not come in kits, okay? They simply come in individually wrapped catheters. So you're going to need to get the uh, material to clean the patient off with the betadine, the swabs, the 4x4s, whatever you do, and you're going to need the xylocaine jellies. So always ask for an order for the xylocaine jelly. It does not hurt to have that on the floor. If you have to go through the Pixis, do that, but have that available when you put any catheter in, pretty much any patient, but particularly the men. Ask for the xylocaine jelly order. And again, on the straight calf program for the men, use the 14 CUDE. It comes separately wrapped. Just have everything else that you need brought to the bedside. The last catheter I want to talk about is a council, C-O-U-N-C-I-L, council tip catheter. Looks like just any, like any other catheter we've used. This one typically is red in color. Uh, it does not have an angle like a CUDE catheter. What it has is a special opening at the tip. Okay, the reason for that opening is that sometimes we have to, on the floor, pass a scope and a wire to help guide that catheter into the bladder. And that's done by the urologist, certainly. But the answer is, once we get that wire into the bladder, let's say we're passing through an obstruction from scar tissue, we got a wire through that scar, then we can pass this council tip catheter that has that opening over the wire, and it really guides it nicely into the bladder. Then the, the wire comes out. We again always irrigate the catheter to make sure we're in. Make sure it flows in and flows out, not just in. Again, if it flows in and doesn't flow out, you're not in the bladder. The last thing, again, you do is blow up the balloon at that point. That's a council tip catheter. So those are the basic catheters that we use in urology. How do I know if I'm in the bladder? How do I know that that CUDE made it into the bladder? You may not get an immediate return of urine. There could be a clot in there or worse, obviously, that you're not in. If there's any question, you don't get a good return or minimal return, even if the catheter is all the way up here, to the, almost to the tip of the penis, you think you're there, obviously, but if you're not getting a return, do not blow up the balloon. Again, the last thing you want to do is blow up the balloon. Get a irrigating kit with saline. Always use saline when you irrigate a patient. 
simply because if there's any perforation, sterile water could be absorbed and we don't want that because you can lower a patient's sodium level. Use sterile saline, you get the catheter, you irrigate through the catheter and pull back. Okay, if it irrigates in and out, then you know you're in, okay? If it irrigates in but doesn't irrigate back out, you're not in, okay? So if that happens, again, do not blow up the balloon, okay? It has to irrigate in and out easily, then you know you're in. If it doesn't happen, take it back out, try again, okay? I think two times should be maximum. If you're not getting it in within two tries, stop there. Do not go any further. Ask for help, okay? Particularly, I would ask the, uh, if there's a urologist nearby to help you out, okay? Why wouldn't it go in, okay? Well, as I said, the anatomy is such that some men have big prostates. You could be hitting the edge of the prostate and it's just not going in. Or some men have had radiation therapy. There's some scar tissue down here. You just can't get in. Do not force a catheter. You're just going to stir up problems. You get two tries maximum, and if it doesn't work, stop there. Okay. So again, in summary, the, the typical catheters that you will be using on the floor or in the ICU or the ER is the standard 16 French size catheter for placement uh, for drainage of the bladder. That's the 16. The Coudé catheter, which I recommend for all men, uh, Coudé for elbow, and again, xylocaine jelly works real well for that, okay? The CBI catheter, continuous bladder irrigation catheter, where the fluid goes in and out through the main port, typical for a post-terp or transurethral resection of the prostate, or someone who's had a bladder tumor resection or some sort of bleeding uh, typically of the lower tract uh, that needs continuous 24-hour flow to help prevent clotting off. The other catheter is the council tip catheter that has an opening at the uh, entrance and what that does is it allows a wire to be passed and dilators pass and then the catheter placed into the bladder, particularly if you have an issue of stricture, this works real well you pass it over the wire with the help of the urologist. And then the last catheter is the catheter for straight calf program, where the catheter is a 14 French, comes in a kit, ready to go, has everything in it, uh, except again, you may want to ask for the xylocaine jelly. And this is for a disposable situation, perhaps every six hours the patient gets catheterized. Again, for the men, I would recommend that even if it's a straight calf program, I would recommend you ask for the 14 Coudé catheter size catheter for the men for straight calfing every six hours or so. Get the Coudé and I would use a 14 French. The one thing I do want to stress that I didn't mention previously is when should a catheter come out? When is there a question of a catheter removal, all that? Uh, if there's any question, you want to stress that the the answer should come from the urologist, okay? Not the internist, not the family practitioner. You want to stress that, please let me check with the urologist of when the catheter is to be removed. The reason being is many times an order comes in to have the catheter removed. And by the time things get around to it, the catheter comes out about eight o'clock at night. Well, what happens then at two in the morning is if the patient can't urinate, typically somebody gets called at two in the morning. So you really want to have the urologist order out the catheter. I would recommend that all catheters are removed during daylight hours, particularly morning. I would not remove a catheter, it's something we learned in residency, do not remove a tube after 5 p.m., particularly because of these issues of having a retention problem at two in the morning. But the other thing I do want to mention is the one catheter you do not want to remove is a patient who had a robotic radical prostatectomy for cancer. So that's where the catheter is placed and has to stay for about seven to 10 days to allow the area to heal. This is a patient who had prostate cancer, had the, ca had the prostate removed, and has a catheter now between the penis and the bladder to allow the area to heal. He has to go home with that catheter. If there's any question of a radical prostate patient's catheter not working, the immediate thing to do is call 
the urologist. Do not irrigate the catheter. Do not change the catheter. Do not play with the balloon on the catheter. Call the urologist immediately. If you remove that catheter on this type of patient, that sets off a lot of problems about getting that catheter back in. The patient actually may have to go back to surgery to get that catheter put back in. So again, any robotic radical prostatectomy patients, any questions regarding their catheter working, then please just call directly to the urologist and get the questions answered. So next I want to talk about the standard urology cart. Uh, here at Gardens, they made it yellow for obvious reasons. You can't miss it. Uh, so when a doctor asks to have the urology cart brought to the floor, the reason for that is it has just about everything we need to get a catheter into a patient. Okay, This is typically in the uh, central supply area. So you would call central supply. They're usually there 24 hours a day. You would have them bring up the urology cart. What is in the urology cart? Well, you have all kinds of catheters, okay? We talked about the coup days, we talked about the CBI catheters. We have all, pretty much all the catheters you need, okay? But it also has irrigation supplies, okay? It has betadine, it has some of that xylocaine jelly, uh, pretty much everything you need to get a catheter into a patient, including some dilators and wires and things like that. So we talked about the urology cart, uh, what's in it, what you need, pretty much everything you need to get a catheter established. I want to have Debbie show us about the CBI, continuous bladder irrigation in particular, because there are times that you may need to establish the catheter from scratch on the floor, okay? So Debbie, take it from there. So the supplies that you would need to get would be the saline bag. You would need to get the tubing for the saline bag. You would also need to have then as well your uh, Foley capture bag of saline as well as your CBI Foley tubing. So most important thing to do is to start is to make sure all your clamps are clamped, that the roller clamp is on so that as you begin to attach your fluid bag, the fluid doesn't roll everywhere across your patient. So first thing that we want to do is we're going to ready. We've got it clamped again. We're going to, it's best to lay it down on the table as well. We're going to remove the blue and we want to really make sure that we spike the bag fully all the way in and not puncturing the bag at the same time that you're doing it. Okay, so the bag is spiked and what we want to do then is go ahead and hang our bag. You just want to have an IV pole. Okay, and then on the tubing here that you um, clamped, you just want to make sure that you unclamp and you're going to actually fill the fluid. It'll start coming down and as you undo the roller, you're going to ensure that you have flow. At the point that you have flow, go ahead and clamp and do the roller to clamp off the fluid from rolling through. Okay. Perfect. So now we're, we're set up, we're ready to go. We have the CBI fluid lined up, ready to go. You've gotten all the bubbles out of there. Try to leave a little bit of water, in the, or saline I should say, in the chamber so you can see the drip, okay? Don't fill it so much that you can't see the drip. Just like I guess in any IV setup, you wanna see that drip so you can monitor the rate, okay? Okay. So then your next step would be you have your uh, CBI Foley, as well as your Foley bag. We obviously would be doing this with all sterile gloves. You want to make sure that you put the drainage bag that it would be going into the center port. And that's also the port that Dr. Ch Jacobs talked about that would be the irrigation. You would then take your sailing bag tubing, which is going to be your inflow into your tubing as well. And then again, as you would be inserting the Foley, you would ensure you would have some urine output into the bag prior to blowing up the balloon and getting yourself ready. Just the location of the Foley bag as well is important that it's below the bladder and it would be secured as well on the leg 
of the patient once all is established. When we're all set to go and everything's been completed, you can go ahead and do undo your roller, undo your clamp, and make sure that you have flow through all the way to the bag. Again, I want to stress the point about if there's any question, you do not blow up the balloon. The last thing you do is blow up that balloon. If you still have any questions, you disconnect here, you get your irrigating kit, irrigate in and out as the CBI flows, make sure it flows in, and make sure you can pull back. If you cannot pull back, you're not in. Stop the irrigation, take out the catheter, give it one more try. Again, lubrication with xylocaine jelly really will help. The other thing is these are typically in kits ready to go. Everything should be in here. On the CBI, you want the 4,000 cc bag. The usual catheters for standard drainage are 2,000 cc's. But obviously, these are three or 4,000 cc bags. You're gonna be filling up those bags pretty fast. So get the 4,000 cc bag when you do a CBI setup. So the last thing we want to talk about is the cystoscopy cart, also called cysto cart for short. Uh, this is typically in the operating room in the cystoscopy suite. Uh, we keep it loaded, ready to go, so that if we have to do a cystoscopy on the floor or in the emergency room, uh, you can call the operating room, have somebody deliver it to the floor or the ER, and you have everything you need to do a cystoscopy or a look in the bladder. Why would anyone want to do a look in the bladder on the floor? Well, there are some patients who are so ill, such as ICU patients, they cannot make it to the operating room, and they are bleeding, or we cannot establish a catheter. And so we want everything ready for us to do what we need to do at the bedside for diagnostic and treatment purposes. The key things, again, is you want to make sure everything that we need on the cart is on the cart. I've had cases where I show up and the scope is missing or the light source is missing. It would not hurt for you to plug in the light source, turn it on, and make sure it's working. It's very frustrating, and it's happened many times to me, that the bulb blew out and no one checked it. So make sure that the scope is there, make sure that the light source is working. What we'd like to do is when the doctor arrives, everything is ready to go. It certainly saves some time. Uh, the key things you want to have on the tray table of the patient at the bedside is you want to have the betadine ready to go, some 4x4 four is ready to go, a specimen container, okay, a syringe if we need to take a specimen from the scope so we can send that off for cytology or culture, okay. Have the towels out on the tray table ready to prep the patient and if needed you have your uh, catheter irrigation tray ready to go if there's any question here about irrigating the patient. So what you'll do is have everything on the patient's tray table ready to go. You want to make sure that your saline irrigation is ready to go, okay? In a cystoscopy, you really only need the 1,000 cc bag for a cystoscopy. You don't need the full 4,000 cc CBI catheter bag. You'll have your cystoscope irrigating tubing that gets prepped like we did for the CBI catheter. Plug it in, make sure the clamps are on so it doesn't make a mess of the place. Have that ready to go. Have your scope ready to go, have the light source plugged in, have everything out on the tray ready to go. The other thing I would recommend, and it's probably not called by the urologist, is I would have the standard urology cart, the yellow cart that we use for placing catheters in general. When they call for the cystoscopy cart, it doesn't hurt to get the standard urology cart there as well because there's times when the doctor is looking for a particular item and if the doctor is finicky and he doesn't have or she doesn't have the particular item in the cystoscopy cart, the urology cart probably has it. So you don't have to go rushing and hunting for that piece of equipment that's needed. And that is a cystoscopy. So I want to thank Debbie again for our, her help today in putting this all together. Uh, again, the key thing as far as urology, unfortunately many of the nurses have not had the training that they need 
Do not fear in asking your seniors questions. It does not hurt to ask a question. It hurts if you hurt the patient with those catheters. So please, don't be ashamed to ask the questions about urology and how to place things into the patients and how to irrigate. You cannot go wrong by doing so. I thank you for listening. Have a great day.